almost forgot. I'm sorry. Okay. So this is going to be 0 0.4. Yes. This is going to be what, 40%? 40%. There you go. All right, that one's done. Okay, now number two is solve for simple fly and write mixed number if a book means a multiply. So three over four multiply two over seven. Is this, uh, can I just go cross? So like yes. seven uh -huh. multiply by two is 14. And then seven multiply by three. No, 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 no. Oh, three times two, three times two is six. Or just forward? Four times seven is 28, right? 28. Can we now reduce? And then we have to simplify this, right? Yeah, if you can reduce it, always try to reduce it. We divide. So this can be reduced down by what? Two? Down to three over what? 14? That'd be your answer. Okay. All right, what's the next one? Four ninths times three eighths. Yeah, four over four over nine. Times three eighths. Times three over eight, yes. Four times three is what? Twelve? Twelve. Nine times eight is seventy-two. Seventy-two. And then we reduce it, we divide it to. Can we reduce this by two? Yeah, I'll take it down by two, down to six over 36. Yes. Can we reduce this further? By six, we can reduce this down to what? One six? Yes. That's your answer. All right, next one is five, five over 13. No, no, 12 fifths divided by. Oh, yeah, 12, 12, 12 over five divided by three yeah. over eight. Yeah, exactly. So I could change this to 12 fifths times five thirds. You got to flip the second fraction upside down, correct? Okay. And what's that going to give us after that? That's going to give us 12 times 5 is what, 60? 5 times 3 is 15. We could reduce this down by 5. 5 goes into 12, 12, 5 goes into 60 12 times. 5 divides into 15 3 times. And then we could reduce this down by 3 to take this down to what, 4 over 1 or 4, correct? Right. Okay. Number five. Next one is five thirteens. Add it to two fifths. Adding two over five. Now we need a common denominator of five like and thirteen. Seven. You know what it's going to be? It's going to be five times thirteen, which is sixty-five. So what I got to multiply this fraction by to build it up to the equivalent fraction with the denominator of 65, I got to multiply it by 5 over 5? Yes. Which will give me 25 over what, 65? And this fraction has to be multiplied by 13 over 13 to build this fraction up to 26 over what, 65? Yes. Now it's 25 plus 26. 51 over what? Yeah, I don't think we can reduce that anymore, okay? All 
Next one is six fifths added to two ninths. Six over five plus two ninths over nine, yes. We need a least common denominator of five and nine, which is five times nine, which is what, 45? Yes. This first fraction gets multiplied by nine over nine to build us up into an equivalent fraction of six times nine is 54 over 45. Second fraction gets multiplied by five over five to build us up to 10 over what, 45? What's 54 plus 10? 64. Over what, 45? Yes. And can we reduce 64 over 45? Supposedly, no. No, I don't. Well, let's see. We can just leave it there and then maybe. Yeah, we'll... no, that's it. That's reduced. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So. And then we're going to go to number seven. All right, number seven. Four over five multiply 45 over 26. Well, big numbers. You can do four times 45 over five times 26, or you can do some cross canceling. You want to do cross canceling? Would it be matter? Well, Does that matter when we do it stays off numbers? having to reduce it stays off having to reduce very big numbers at the end. Okay. Let's do crossing. Five divides into itself one time. Five divides into 45, what? Nine times. Two divides into four twice. Two divides into 26, 13 times. Now what's two times nine? And that sits over one times 13. So we've got 18 over 13. That works, correct? That could work. Now, if you did four times 45, it's going to be a big number, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That'd be 180. And five times 26 would be 130. Can you reduce this? It should still reduce down to this, though, right? Yeah. You can reduce this down by 10, down to 18 over 13. That wasn't that bad, was it? Yeah. So either way, whether you want to cross cancel first and then multiply or multiply first and reduce, it's up to you, okay? Oh, actually, your math is actually easier. Just go ahead and divide it or, uh, right away rather than or multiply it and then divide it afterwards. It's up to you. I'm leaving it up to you. Ah, okay, 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 okay. I got you. I got you. All right. right. Sometimes cross-canceling is nice because otherwise you have to reduce very big numbers at the end. Big numbers, they will be more complicated. Got it. So, All right. So number eight will be the that This is decimal divided by. Yeah. Yes. We're dividing. So we got to divide five into 25 and four tenths. Five divides into 25, five times. Subtract off, you get zero, bring down to four. Five divides into four, zero times, correct? Five divides into 40, how many times? Eight times. Zero remainder. What's your answer? 5.08? That's your quotient. 
Number nine, we're adding decimals. That means you just got to line up your decimal points. So 0 0.019. So this is what we're going to have to do here. Uh, you can add some optional zeros here. So nine, five, three, one point three four three five nine. That's your answer. Number ten, forty two point seven is going to be multiplied by ten point three. Number number ten. Yes, 42.7 times 10.3. Three times seven is what? 21, carry the two. Three times two is six, plus two is what? Eight. Three times four is 12. Zero times seven is zero. You don't have to do zero times this and zero times this. Just move from the zero to the one now. One times seven is seven. One times two is two. One times four is four. Add. Can I see your paper? Can you see it now? Yes. Good. So your product is 43,981. Notice zero times seven is zero, then I moved over to the one, correct? One times seven is seven, one times two is two, one times four is two. Okay, number 11. Is seven over 11? All right, so. Division. Uh, to 14 over three. We're gonna take 711 and divide it by- 14 uh, over three. 14 thirds. Can you see my paper? Yes. Okay. So this is 711 times what? Three over 14? Gotta flip the second fraction upside down. Why do you wanna do this? You wanna multiply across first then reduce or cross cancel first then multiply? Easier way, the easiest one. Well, it's debatable here, either way. So okay. seven times three is what, 21? 41. 11 times 14 is, I don't know. One fifty-four. Yes. And we reduce this now. I think it reduces down by seven. Down to three, 22. There's your answer. Okay. Number 12. Need 15 plus seven, six. Need a common denominator? What is the least common denominator of six and 15? <clears throat> What's the smallest number that six and 15 divide into? Do you agree that would be 30? Okay. Well, look, if you can't think of 30, you can always just do six times 15, just multiply the denominators together and you get 90. That's not the least common denominator, but it is a common multiple. So this fraction eight fifteenths gets multiplied by what? Six over six? Seven six gets multiplied uh, by what? Mark, I can't see 15. your paper. Well, can you see it yes, now? Down. Yes. Sorry about that. So this is the question for number thirteen. Number uh, no. <laughs> I mean, sorry, number twelve. Twelve. That's my two. mistake. Eight times six so that's forty-eight over ninety. Seven times fifteen is one hundred five. What's 105 plus 148? Oh, let's see. 153, I think. Yeah. 
Can we reduce 153 over 90? You know the threes, the threes divisibility test? What's one plus five plus three, is that nine? Yes. Nine divides into the sum of these digits, so nine will divide into 153, and nine divides into 90. Nine divides into 153, how many times? 17 times, and divides into 90, 10 times. That'd be your answer, 17 tenths. How do you add these percents together? This would be 85.5%, correct? Yes. That's all there is to it. And that is the answer for number 13? Yep, That's 13, right. yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I got two fifths minus four sevenths. What would be a common denominator? Five times seven works, right? Which is 35? Yes. So this two fifths gets multiplied by seven over seven. 11 sevenths gets multiplied by five over five. Two times seven is 14 over 35. 11 times 5 is 55. And I see your paper. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Therefore, I have 14 minus 55 over 35. That was 14 minus 55. Negative 41 over 35, and that cannot be reduced, okay? So this one is like cross multiplied number 15 or? Well, you can multiply four times 45 over five times 26, but the numbers are gonna get big or you can cross cancel first. Okay. We wanna do cross cancel. Okay. Two divides into four twice, two divides into 26, 13 times. Five divides into itself once, five divides into 45, nine times. Now we just have two times nine, and that sits over one times 13. 18, 13. So that looks like a repeat. Didn't we do this problem before? Mm -mm. No, we did that before, 18, 13. So I remember that one. Or maybe it just has the same uh, answer. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> it's possible. All right, number 16. 7 elevenths divided by 14 thirds. That seems like this is a re review, too. How do you divide 7 elevenths by 14 thirds? Change division to multiplication, flip second fraction upside down, correct? Yes. Uh, we have this now. <clears throat> Multiply across seven times three. 
over 11 times 14. What's 11 times 14? Yes. You know, this does reduce by seven. Down to three over 22. There you go. Is eight over fifteen? It's which one? No, number seventeen. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there's more. Okay. And I thought I was done. Okay. Sorry about that. Don't worry. Now, eight over fifteen. Try a uh, plus what? Seven six. Common denominator is going to be what? Why not just do six times 15 again, which is going to be 90? This looks like a repeat. I think we had already done these through this one before. I think so. Yeah, I know so. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is a repeat. I'm not just saying that. I'm not making it up. All right. So, um, and then you multiply this by, and it just seems like we did this one before. But I don't know. Eight times six is 48, and that's over 90. Seven times 15 on a good day, I believe, is 105. Yeah, this is 153 over 90. We already did this problem before. And it's reduced it down by nine, down to 17 over 10. I know we did that one before. That's, that's a repeat. Let's reduce it down by nine. Now, number 18, the question is solve for the variable. We got nine over 21 is equal to X over seven. This is a proportion. So we got to solve for X. So we cross multiply. So nine times seven, and we set that equal to this cross product, 21 times X. We're cross multiplying. We're not cross canceling. Because we got the equal sign in between these fractions, not multiplication, okay? Don't confuse those two. What's well, 9 times 7? 63. How do we solve for x? Divide by... twenty one goes into 63, what, three times? That's what x would be, three. Cross multiply, 0 0.6 times 2. And we'll set that equal to 1.5x. How do I solve for x? How do I get rid of that 1.5? It's being multiplied by x. <laughs> we divide both sides of our equation by what? By the way, 0.6 times 2 is 1.2. We got to divide both sides of our equation by 1.5. No. What's 1.2 divided by 1.5? You get 0 0.8. And that's what x is equal to. Number 20 will be 4 over 15. Yep. Well, what is N? 9? N. The question, what number is N? 
4 over 15 is equal to 9 over n. We cross multiply and equate cross products. So we have 4n, and we set that equal to 9 times 15. So 4n is equal to 135. And we divide both sides by 4. What's 135 divided by 4? Oh, I don't know. It's 33.75. Okay, I can't see your paper now. Okay, no. Number uh, 21, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're on number 21 now. Yes, 21. Now we have to solve for x. And that's right, we're gonna cross multiply. So we're gonna take 12 times 2 thirds, 12 over one times two thirds. And we're gonna set that equal to eight x. And we're gonna solve for x. Well, it's 12 times two thirds. It's gonna be 24 over three. But what does 24 over three reduce down to? Three divides into 24 how many times? Eight divided by eight. Therefore, this implies that X is equal to what? One? You see my paper here? Yes. 22. 68.25 is 105% of what number? You want to? Of is to multiply. Yeah. So why are we going to set this up as an equation or what? Yes. 68.25 is means equals 105% as a decimal is 1.05. What number? We don't know. We'll call it X. No, I know I go size by 1.05. Yeah, do you mind to scroll up your paper again? And this implies that X is equal to what? So we gotta take that and divide that by 1.05. So that'll be 68.25 divided by 1.05. 65, I'm 65. Yeah, I remember this. So for uh, convert one, one 14 centimeter to feet and inches. Uh, you remember this one? I thought we did, huh? Well, I know I, I did. Like maybe the question is the same, but the number is different. 114 centimeters to feet and inches. Okay, nearest mile and nearest inch. Yeah, I know we did something like this. I can't remember. Um, can you see my paper or not? Yes. What do we know? We know that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Kind of bring that to the party here. So 
we got to convert this into what? Inches. One inch. 2.547 inches. As X inches. Uh, 114 centimeters. Cross multiplying. So one times 114 set that equal to 2.54x. X is going to be equal to 114 divided by 2.54, which is going to be. Forty-four point eight eight. That's going to be inches. But we got to convert that into feet. What in inches? Correct. Yes. So we got forty-four point eight inches. That's to x feet. That's twelve inches. That's to one foot. Cross multiply again, this number this is 44.8. All right, so we got this times this, and that's gonna be equal to what, 12X? Divide by 12. And X is equal to, what's 44.8 feet divided by 12? Now, wait a minute. This should be. forty-four 44.8. 44.8 divided by 12 is this number of feet. 44.8 divided by 12. So we definitely get three feet out of the deal because this is going to be 3.73333. 3, 3. So we get three feet. And then how many inches we got? We got 0. 0.7333 3 feet left over. So you're going to multiply this by 12 inches per foot to get to so many inches left over. It'll be nine inches. I give you nine inches, okay. Three feet, nine inches. Number 24. All right, next one. 24. What does the unit cost? A 40 ounce of shampoo to cost $3. So it's $3 per what? 40 ounces? We just gotta divide uh, three by 40. And three divided by 40 converts us into a unit cost of uh, 0 0.075 per one ounce. That's about eight cents per ounce. Okay. That's your answer for that one. What is the answer? 0 0.075 dollars per ounce. That's about eight cents per ounce, correct? All right, number 25, what, what's the unit cost of eight AAA batteries that cost $9.84? So it's $9.84 per how many of these batteries? Eight of them. What's $9.84 divided by eight? Gives you $1.23 per battery. For one battery. 
That's the unit cost of that. Twenty six. Set up a portion. She drove her Honda one hundred forty five miles. Five gallons of gas. At that rate, how far could she drive on twelve gallons? We'll call it X. We'll cross multiply one hundred forty five. Times 12, and set that equal to 5 times x. Now, 145 times 12, what's that going to be? 1740 is equal to 5x. Divide both sides by, by 5. Seventeen forty divided by divided by five. Three forty eight. She so can drive three hundred forty eight miles. Twelve gallons of gas. Did you get that one? Yeah. All right. Oh boy, we're gonna have a hard time finishing this. Next one, 27. Blueberries cost six dollars and fifty cents per two hundred and fifty grams. This is at Costco. Trader Joe's, 275 for 100 grams. Joe's. What's the best buy? Well, you got to convert these into unit cost. So 6.50 divided by 250 converts it into a cost of uh, 0 0.026 per one gram. At Trader Joe's, 2.75 divided by 100. Uh, 0 0.0275 per one gram. What's cheaper? Looks like Costco is a little bit cheaper, correct? Always. All that, right. That's fine, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> All right. I think every student will be guessing answering this because we all know Costco is way cheaper than other grocery stores. Yeah, usually they are. You're correct. The admission, <laughs> yeah, um, the admission fee at a small fair is $1.50 for children, $4 for adults, $1 for adults, $1 for a certain day, 200 200 people at the fair, $50 for the clerk, and only children, and only adults for them. Okay. Now, um, let X be equal to the number of children that come to the fair. 2200 minus X, therefore, is equal to the number of adults that attend. Children tickets go for $1.50 a piece. So $1.50, $1.50 a piece times X tickets. That's the amount of money raked in from children. For adults, it's $4 a piece. Times the number of adult tickets, which is 2,200 minus X adult tickets sold. Together, these better sum up to what? $5,050 collected. We got to solve for X. I'd multiply both sides of the equation by, by 10. Turn this into 15X. So multiply both sides of the equation by 10 to get rid of the decimals. Plus 40. 
Let them up on the right side by 10 also. Now we distribute. 40 times 2200 is going to be 88. 40 times negative x is this. What's 15x minus 40x? 25x, negative 25x. Now I'm going to subtract 88,000 from both sides. So you got negative 25x is equal to, what's 50,500? Minus 88,000. Divided by negative 25. X walks out of this with a value of 1,500. So they sold 1,500 children tickets. And they sold 2,200 minus 1,500, 700 adult tickets. There you go. You have the number of tickets of each that were sold. Wow, we got still some, still got eight problems left. I don't know how we're going to make it. Uh, is there anyone, anyone, anyone in particular you like, you'd like to see? So number 29. We got eight problems left. We're not going to finish. Anyone in particular? 29. 29. Number of students, 85 students enroll in school, and license 4, 5, 4, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, All right, in 1970, how many children were enrolled? 45.6 million. Number enrolled in 1995 is 3%. It's 3.3% less than in. 1970. How many were enrolled in 1995? So, number enrolled in 1995 is 3.3% less. So, is 100 minus 3.3% of Number enrolled in 1970. We'll call the number enrolled in 1995 X. Set that equal to what's 100 minus 3.3? 67.3? No, wrong. 100 minus 3 is 67. No, it's 97. Point three would be ninety six point seven. Ninety six point seven percent. So as a decimal, ninety six point seven is point nine six seven. Of the number enrolled in two thousand 
1970 was 45.6 million. When you multiply these together, you'll have the number of people enrolled in 95. Forty four point one million. Forty four point one million enrolled in nineteen ninety five. Can you tell which year had the greatest greater percentage of students in this age group in school? That I get. Well, 1970, did you agree? Because there were 3.3% less than in 1995. All right. All right. We don't have much time left. Two minutes left. Which one do you want to do? Um. So the answer for that is there were 44.09 million students enrolled in school in 1995, right? That's your right. answer? 44.1 million. I rounded off. Yep. Oh, 40. Okay. So, yes. Okay. So, wait a minute. So, is there one? Oh, you're, oh, you, you 44.1. I have 44.9. Okay. That's 40. 44.09 is 44.1. All right, any of these remaining ones? Some of these you can get. You're you're used to these, what, shopping problems, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So are you going to send me this video? Yeah, I'm going to try, okay? Okay. And then I'm gonna try to, I, I owe you two more videos, okay? Yes. And then after this exam, um, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to uh, re uh, schedule a lesson with you again. I just wanted to find out. Uh, what are the uh, the rest of the subject that she wants to give it to me because I came in late this semester because uh -huh. I was out of country so I was everything that I'm doing is in rushing okay and isn't good because you know <laughs> in order to learn we can't rush things so but uh thank you so much and then I'll be waiting for your uh for the video from yes, today's I'll give you those links as soon as I can yes okay. and I'll see you again soon okay Mark all right. Thank take you care. so much for your help. I truly appreciate this. You're welcome. Best of luck. All right. Okay. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.